Hu Jiantao once said, the Chinese government and I myself have always attached a great importance to US-China relations. Keep this in mind as we discuss today China's 20th Congress and what will it mean for the future of US-China relations. My name is Dr. David Waralu. And my name is Dr. Ross Stewart. And you are watching Geopolitics in Conflict. China's President Xi Jinping tightened the Communist Party's control over the nation and called for military growth. Xi Jinping has become the most powerful leader in China in decades after being given a third term as leader of the Communist Party. The leader Party. of China, Xi Jinping, is set to be given a historic third term in power this weekend. Really, when it comes to the important things, the economy, mm. security, Taiwan, Hong Kong, all those things, well, you know, they're really just staying the course. All right, what's going on with this topic, Ross? I know it's a major one. Well, you know, this is this, on the 16th, which was a few days ago, Yeah. 20th Communist Party Congress convened. This is where they bring thousands of, of representatives of the Chinese Communist Party together in mm. Beijing, and they do all kinds of deals, all kinds of commitments to each other. Yeah. Uh, and they really set policy and decide who's going to be the next mm. president. Isn't that like about 2,500 attendees? It's in that, huge. It's a big at the, at the main hall of China and all those. So we're not here to talk about that. <laughs> we're going to be talking about what this Congress will mean for the future, especially when it comes down to U.S.-China relations, because there are so many topics that are like brewing. I would say conflicts that are brewing, and they're going to require some sort of uh, cool heads, otherwise... Oh, the old, and that's, that's the real hope here. Yeah. One of the things that President Xi has done is he's eliminated a number of his competitors that were really going to cause trouble at this Congress, mm. which I congratulate him for. I mean, it's their country. They get to decide how they run what it. What they want, yeah. But as opposed to there being great acrimony and great conflict, there's going to be a lot less conflict and a lot more people coming together yeah. to figure out what to do next. When I've been reading about it, most of the, uh, what I got through the research that I did on this that suggests that uh, President Xi most likely will win a third term. If he wins the third term, it will be unlike his predecessors too, Hu Jintao and Jiang Zemin. Both of those leaders served only two terms, five years each. But for Xi, if he wins the term, that's kind of going to put him on a different league altogether. It's going to put him on the same playing field as Mao Zedong. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? You know, it's hard to tell. Yeah. The complexity that China and, well, actually, the whole geopolitical scene right now, yeah. the complexity worldwide looks to me like continuity is probably a pretty important thing. And for China to change course right now with a new leader, yeah. Mm, it, it, you just can't tell. Yeah, I see your point. I see your point. But there are those who are arguing the opposite of what you said, Ross, by saying that, well, is she going to become like one of those type of dictators to maintain it? Because it's been the norm for a Chinese leader after they serve two, ter two terms, five years each, which means 10 years, they'll turn over power to the next leader. She, uh, yeah. she did not do this in last term. You know why? Because they amended. He amended certain things that allow him to be president for life. He and Putin, they really, they really yeah, got it going That's why on. they get along. <laughs> China's more than a passing interest. And as I've been carefully watching this over mm -hmm. the last few years, President Xi has become more and more powerful and more and more dictatorial and more and more rigid in terms of how he deals with things. I don't know if it's a good thing or not. Yeah. But, you know, he's in a pressure cooker. Oh, yeah, given what's going on with, Hong Kong, with, the, with the Taiwan, of course, the issue of Hong Kong is a done deal. This is it. Now, Hong Kong is, has folded into the authority of Beijing. That's done. Now, the next is, <laughs> is Taiwan. But this is where my big concern is. You know, I always like to think ahead of time. And I am thinking, because I always, like I always say, uh, you think of the trends and you think outside the box. What am I referring to here? I'm referring to the U.S. Congress Act. It's called oh. the Taiwan Act, which is, by the way, this bill in legislation 
was sponsored by two main players in Congress. Menendez, he's the chair of the Republic of the Democratic. He's a Democrat, but he's the chair of the Foreign Relations Committee. Okay. Okay. And by Lindsey Graham. No. So two hawks that they are pushing for arming Taiwan. With this Taiwan Act, allow now for the U.S. to sell about $10.8 billion worth of weapons. President Xi, from the very beginning of this, said, one nation, two systems. Yeah. And then he backed it up and said, Chinese people are not going to go have a war with other Chinese people. We're, we don't want to kill, kill our own people. Yeah. We will find other means, and they certainly have other means to bring Taiwan into the fold. Yeah. Well, interesting enough that last week I listened to a speech by uh, Tsai, the president. And by the way, uh, uh, her, her PhD has not been confirmed. <laughs> so I can't call her Dr. Tsai because it has not been confirmed. <laughs> so I checked into this from a university in England. You know, the committee, the chair committee was not there. There is no names. Oh, so, interesting. Anyway. Interesting. Anyway, interesting. but Tsai, uh, in her speech, you know what she said? She said, we do not want to fight China. So for her to state something like this, that tells me the message she is sending to China. We don't want to fight. It's almost like what she's saying is we want to maintain the status quo. Well, they're certainly not doing the right things to do that. Yeah. If they, if they do purchase $10 billion worth of... And $10 billion is not defensive weapons. Yeah, that's what I would say. And that was the next point I was going to talk about is what type of weapons is going to be. And this is where I see the concern about if she hypothetically... By the time you watch this video, most likely the decision will have been made and maybe C will be granted third term or maybe a new leadership. What I do find interesting is that even within the what they call per, yeah, Politburo, yeah. which is the leadership, the close ones, you yeah. know, there are some changes from the premier. It's a very complicated system, but uh, let me just share with you uh, one quote from Xi, what he wrote. And he said that, and I quote, from this day forward, the central task of the CPC will be to lead the Chinese people of all ethnic groups and in a concerted effort to realize the second centenary goal of building China into a great modern socialist country in all respects and to advance the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation on all fronts through a Chinese path of modernization, end of quote. There is a lot in this message, Ross. Yeah, I mean, really a lot. And, you know, we talked about rejuvenation. There's this theme that runs through all of this about the glory of China mm -hmm. in the past, mm -hmm. where it was the most civilized, most civilized yeah, yeah. country in the world and the greatest economy in the world at one time, mm -hmm. and how somehow it was stolen away from them. And so, talk about rejuvenation. Uh, at other times, she will refer to the dignity of the Chinese people. What we're taught, what he's referring to is the age of humiliation, the hundred years of humiliation. Yeah. That does not leave their consciousness. And so we look at the U.S. intervening in, say, Taiwan, and going, do they not know what they're up against? Yeah. They, they, they are, the Chinese are not going to accept another humiliation. Yeah. And that's what Taiwan really is. It's a humiliation foisted on them by the West. Yeah, and, and let alone the consequences of a war because it won't be a pretty one if ever it breaks out between the U.S. I don't foresee that, Ross. Uh, again, I could be wrong, but it just from the logistics of it, you know, we almost, if that to happen, we will be fighting China from the sea. What can you achieve from the sea? Well, what we can achieve is the loss of all our aircraft carriers, yeah. the loss of all the destroyers, yeah. because the land missiles, you know, all the scenarios that the Pentagon did, yeah. seven, what was it, 17 out of 17 the, uh, trials? Se 17 they, out of 18. 17 out of 18, the Chinese destroyed the American Navy. Navy, yeah. Now, somebody has to be paying attention to that. Indeed. 
And this is where uh, it was very important for us to address this topic because we want to not only keep you informed, but put things in perspective for you. Of course, you reach your own conclusion as to where you see things. It's almost like what we did with the, the video about Brazil. You know, we just provided the possibility of what if the, uh, Lula of Brazil wins yeah, the election, yeah. how that's going to change the global uh, order. It's the same thing with the 20th Congress now. In its 100th anniversary, because that started in 1922. Whoa. Yeah. So this is why it's pivotal for us to understand, uh, hypothetically, if President Xi wins the third term, what kind of foreign policy is he going to embark on? Is he going to be some sort of an aggressive foreign policy, given the changes that's going on right now on the global stage, given the changes that's going on on the economic level? You know, with the strength of BRICS, yes. now that you have two countries, uh, Argentina and Saudi Arabia, considering joining BRICS, we all know what it means, the changes that's going to uh, implement. Well, one of the things it means is that she and Putin and BRICS and lots of uh -huh. others uh -huh. are going to take down the U.S. dollar. I mean, there's a real, this, there's a real effort here to make that happen, and it looks like it's going to work. That's a good point, Ross, and I do see that happening. I really do see it happening. I'm seeing the trends again where they hit it. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen next year, but I do see it going into that direction. The one thing that I ask myself is how do Chinese people feel about Xi's third term? Are they in support of that? Are they against that? And I do not know. I don't know. I can't speculate on something like this. Chinese people will decide for themselves, except that I'm trying to compare, for example, with the two previous predecessors, Hu Jintao and Jiang Zemin. Uh, they only served the two terms and moved on. Now, they did moved on because that was what the constitution in China yeah. dictated the terms. What would have they done if they were in possibility to change the constitution we know going going into this into this election yeah yeah that she and the and the central government was very well thought of and we know it's because of moderate prosperity pulling those people out of poverty and indeed because of indeed. A, 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 a severe anti plague yeah. program yeah. and we know that was the people really liked those they used to like them i don't know where that stands today yeah. so we know going into this that she had a lot of support, uh, but you know this third term thing. Yeah. Did you know, which something I found, I just found out about it, you know, the, the quote that I shared with you, that was from the report that's going to be released. Yeah. And guess how long they've been working at that report? <laughs> almost a year. To my surprise, I really was surprised. Almost a year working on that because every word in that report will be measured. And this is why I'm saying, I'm asking myself, how will Chinese people think now about this 20th Congress? How will they perceive? You know, I do know he has, he, uh, President Xi, has popularity in China, yeah. of course, you know. Why? Because the Chinese people like the stability, of course, and of course the country is moving into the right direction, economically speaking. At least currently. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's still, China is not a small country. With over a billion plus, you're going to wonder, are all of them thinking alike? It depends on how you measure it. You know, there are 57 supposed languages, minority groups, and so on, uh -huh. even though they claim they're mostly Han. Uh, well, that's kind of iffy. Yeah. But, and, but it's a good political move mm -hmm. to, claim the, to claim most everyone's the same mm -hmm. ethnic background. Yeah. What you know is there's got to be enormous diversity and, and, and so many different points of view and things that very, these various populations want and need, the central government has to do something with. Central government is absolutely opposed to uprisings, demonstrations, and so on that are going to cause violence inside. They have such a history of that, they really want to avoid it at all costs if they can. Well, they did that when they had the real estate collapse, remember? Yeah. Oh. We did a video on it, and yeah. there were some protests, and we did mention that one, and, and because that's something we have to, we can, we can show, you guys know this by now, 
We don't sugarcoat things. You can't just provide only the good images. No, you provide whatever. And, and, and they did protest on those. There were demonstrations, especially when the banks uh, kind of shut down, uh, didn't allow people to take their money out. Oh, yeah. And people didn't like that. So, But this time around, it's going to be different. Here is one aspect that I found very, very interesting. We'll talk about this and we'll, we'll close this out. What I found very interesting, Ross, is that the German chancellor... Olaf Scholz yeah. is planning to go to China. <laughs> you know what I found interesting about it? Is that China is selling gas to Europe. And Whoa. now Olaf Scholz is going to China. Because they realize Chinese market will always be one of the most attractive. You can't conduct business without having access to the Chinese market. It's, it's actually, I track this with Germany too. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how much business actually goes back and forth between China and Germany currently. It's impressive. Yeah. Well, you know what? If I am to guess, and this is just a guess, I think Olaf Scholz has been pressured by the business community in Germany because they won't have it. Remember, with the energy crisis going yeah. on in Europe, yeah. some business is going to shut down. And now they're forcing him to go because they're not going to risk it. And I bet, this is just my, my thinking outside the box, I bet by the end of the year, Olaf Scholz might step down. We already saw today, which by the time you see this video, it's already happened, that the Prime Minister of England stepped down. I am a fighter and not a quitter. I am resigning. The shortest Prime Minister in English history. Six weeks. Six <laughs> weeks. I, I knew it three weeks ago, and I tweeted on it, Ross, that... She's not qualified for the job. Well, you, clearly the things she said and the decisions she made and the proposals she made were clearly incompetent well, and unpopular. You're right. Two things that gives me an indication. You know what it was? <laughs> one of them when she said she will press the red button in a reference to the nuclear weapon. And second one has to do with cutting taxes. And right then, as soon as I heard this, which was four weeks ago, I said this lady has no clue what she's talking about. Because she didn't realize by the time she pressed the button, London will cease to exist. <laughs> <laughs> and second thing, taxes, it's not going to work. Because that means the government, UK in this case, will have to borrow more money. So this is why I see Olaf Scholz doing this, making the steps to prevent the same outcome as it happened with Liz Truss. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to find out whether she makes it to be the people's leader well, we'll Which find is the out. Title that Mao Zedong had. Yes, yeah, that was the title for, for Mao Zedong. So. And then see if our predictions come true about him becoming more and more authoritarian, which I suspect he will. Yeah, if he takes all, which on, on one hand, it will be very, very, in my opinion, destructive for China. On the other, that's going to give some sort of a hint as to what type of foreign policy to expect from China yeah. in the next five years. Yes. So. So let us know what you think in the comment section. We love to read your comments and respond to it. And as always, prepare yourself for a changing world order. Till next time. Bye-bye.